Hello. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Uh, is this Nathan? Yeah, 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 it is Nathan. Uh, Nathan, um, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, nothing much. I'm just, uh, just, just hanging out with my family. Uh, just decided to call in about, uh, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I've been having this gas since I was a kid. And, you know, it's, it's, it's put a damper on some of my relationships. Gas. What kind of gas? You mean like flatulence? Like ass gas. Yeah, flatulence. Ass gas. Okay, listen. Before, I need to know this before we get... And it's okay if the answer is yes. We can still have the conversation. But I just need to know before we dive into this. Are you fucking with me? No, I'm not. No, not at all. Do you promise? I I swear. I swear. I swear you're not fucking with me. I promise I'm not fucking with you. Okay, because I read the... My whole family's read... recognized. Your whole family's what? Um, they've they've uh, called it a problem of mine as well. Even some of my teachers throughout school. <laughs> uh, throughout where are you right now? Do you live alone? No, no. At the moment, um, I'm living with my mom, my sister, and my niece. Um, so can, like can, I, can I talk to your mom? Yeah, yeah. Who wants to talk to you? Hello. How do we get to... Hi, what's your name? Um, my name is Mason's mom. I Mason's I probably mom. Choose M-M, not double like... M. Yeah. Double yeah. M. Um, your son tells me that he has a flatulence problem. Would you say that that is accurate? No, that is perfectly accurate. And then some, and honestly, I think this could be maintained with diet control, but he just loves to eat all the crappy foods. What does he eat? Oh, we're talking ice cream, dairy, burgers, all the things that, that cheese, all these things that just really irritate his bowels more and um you know it it sometimes um he can clear a room a house actually mm. um what do, now i'm kind of now hold on all right so uh, just bear with me on this you know how your farts smell kind of good not good but like you know you know what i mean you know what i mean um, do i have to explain this um, they're acceptable to me. I think that's what okay, you're trying to so say. Okay, so the fact that, so like, my, when my mom farts, it's it smells bad. But is there a thing where like, because, I, I don't know, is there a thing that like, because your son came out of you and has similar biology, whatever, chromosome, you know, all that stuff, is it possible, <laughs> Does do any, do his farts, not 100%, but at least... Half of them smell good to you. Not at all. Not at all. In fact, all right. sometimes I can't stand my own. I am very um, conscientious and mindful about what I eat specifically for mm-hmm. that reason. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, uh, the call screener, when they were writing down notes on uh, Mason, they wrote that Mason told them that uh, he farts at least... What is it? Fi- Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me pull this up real quick. Uh, wait a minute. He said fifteen times a day. That's not that bad. He farts. He's got to fart way more than fifteen times a day. Yeah, I think that is some some. I think that's simply super modest. Honestly. He's he's uh, he's Being fudging his, the numbers. Yes. One big time. Say. Big time. Yes. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Okay. So, have you talked to? Mason about a you know I don't know eating better or oh definitely you know, even when least... he was younger you know I would try and control the lunches we packed and the kind of foods he ate and now that he's a older it's just it's it's ridiculous I mean mm-hmm. he does what he wants do you guys have a yard or or a front porch or something somewhere some space we... that Mason could claim as his own to fart in 
and a deal Absolutely. that everyone would stay out of that space and leave him alone in that space, but he can fart there. Absolutely. That I think timeliness is the problem. Getting from point E to point B in a in a timely manner. That's that's mm. the problem. So the farts he can't even hold them in. They just rocket out of his ass against his own will. Yes. 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 And has he been doing this since he was a young child or is this a recent thing? Oh yeah, no no no. This has always been always. This is just one of those things. I think he's lactose intolerant. I don't think beef and meats agree with his um, his diet well. I I don't know. Definitely um, the dairy, though. That, that's a huge factor. Well, um, Mason's mom, thank you very much for uh, for talking to me about this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up you with got Mason it. real quick. Yep, yep. Here he is, Mason. Hello, Mason. Would you? Look, man, here, I'm going to level with you here because I, you know, all the stuff that your mom says that you shouldn't be eating is like, I mean, she described my diet as well. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to preach to you. So do you have a gas problem too? Oh, extremely. Would you, have you ever farted in your mom's face? (laughs) No, no, no. But like I farted like bad enough to where it was like it like it punched her in the face like I did, you know? Would you concede to at least going outside next time you fart so that she doesn't have to deal with it? Would you do that for your mom? Yeah, yeah. You know, I I've tried doing that, you know, but it's you know, what about when I'm sleeping, you know? Okay, you can get a pass when you're sleeping. But I mean, how far away are you guys' bedrooms? Um, downstairs and upstairs. So okay, it's like, so that's and it's just like a straight yeah. channel. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, I mean, look, this seems like a, a a problem that can be solved by you sort of claiming your own territory to fart in, and, and yeah. hopefully respecting that territory. That that's the, the true. That's true. I guess I just gotta you know take that that extra time and not be lazy and just kind of take other people's senses, you know, such as smell into consideration before I decide to, you know, fart. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad we could come to a a, a, a breakthrough here, Mason. Uh, I appreciate you calling in. You have a good rest of the night. Yes, you too, Gecko. You know, I believe Mason's mom when she says that Mason's farts don't smell good to her, but it kind of bums me out that I my scientific analysis wasn't right because it sounds right. Like if I feel like it would make sense that if you bear a child, the child's farts would smell good to you in the same way that your farts smell. Okay, maybe as as uh, his mom said, tolerable. Maybe maybe good is too much of a word, but I don't know. That would make sense, and it bothers me that it's probably not true. Yo, one of my um fucking ah god sorry if i look like i'm in pain one of my toes is uh like it won't go up like there's some sort of muscular atrophy in my toe let's make it, it won't you know how you can take your toe and you can like go like that with you can lift up i can't lift up my toe any medical experts in the chat know how long i have left to live with this toe thing i should get it cut off well that would solve the problem i guess Let's take a phone call. Hello? Hey. Hi, is this Chase? That's me. How are you doing, Gek? Uh, Chase, I'm doing pretty well, actually. My toe thing has gotten mildly better, although I need to see a doctor because I've, I've been eating very shittily, and it could be diabetes, but who knows. Enough about me and my oh, things. No. What's going on with you, Chase? Um, so, I got pretty hurt a few years ago. Um, I got, I, um, with a little context, I, I play a LARP. Uh, it's a full contact sport. We play with, like, big foam swords and uh, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings, but, you know, with foam. And, um, broke my nose, had two really black eyes to the point where I couldn't see for about a day and a half 
because they were wow. so swollen. Uh, I lost a lot of my memory. Like my short-term memory is, uh, <laughs> it's garbage. And I've lost about eight years of my life, like my childhood. I can't remember. And I want to get back to playing the game again. But every time I pick up a sword, it's just like I'm in that moment again. And I'm not sure... I'm not sure how to get past that. Interesting. You lost eight years of memory. So when the accident happened, you you can no longer remember eight years of your childhood. Uh, approximately between ages eight to, well, no, I would say they're like 10 to 14. No, I'm sorry. Uh, my math is bad. Eight to 16. Eight Ish. to sixteen, and uh, did the accident yeah. happen when you were sixteen? It happens when I was oh gosh, how old am I? Uh, twenty-one. I mean, you're twenty-one. That's so interesting that the accident affected such a specific age range. Yeah, so I I worked with a neurologist for maybe two or three months. That doesn't really sound like too long, but. You know, they did MRIs, and they looked through, and they're like, I, I mean, you look all right. There's definitely a little bit of damage, but as long as you don't get hit like that, you'll be all right. Um, mm. And then when I asked about my memory, they kind of shrugged, and they're like, well, you know, maybe it'll come back, maybe it won't. Okay, cool. Mm. Bye. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, look, on the bright side, I feel like there's a lot of people out there that wish that they couldn't remember the ages of, uh, uh, you know, 12 to 14 at the very least. You know, that's totally fair. I'm sure there are a bunch of things. Like, there are definitely some things that people have told me who knew me around that time, like in middle and high school, where they're like, oh, yeah, no, I did this one, like, embarrassing or terrible thing. Like, well, I, I mean, if I did anything like that, I'm... <laughs> um, you don't even yeah. remember. That's pretty right. good. You don't remember the embarrassing stuff that you did when you were 12. Exactly, exactly. And we all do embarrassing things when we're that age. So do – what What about um, – so I'm curious. So did you attempt to put the pieces back together of ages 8 to 16 by talking to other people in your life? Did they help you – um, remember things from that time? So I'm not in contact with many people that I went to school with. Like some of the people that I did go to school with do play the same game. And I have asked them a few questions and they've helped fill a few gaps. I've asked my mom. Uh, apparently I was a little... Uh, I was a rebellious child, apparently, and mm -hmm. which I totally believe. And so my mom's like, oh, yeah, you never really told me anything. I don't really remember anything around then except for what happened around me, which is totally fair. Um, I did ask her if my memory was always this bad because for a few years, because uh, I asked her this very recently, like last month. It's like, hey, has my memory always been this bad? She's like, no, <laughs> absolutely not, um, which is a little concerning in itself. Uh, but I've... You know, I've put together a few things, like I was in theater, which, like, I, I do remember snippets, and I do, like, I've been working with a human therapist for the past few months for this, as well as a few other things, and we've been, we've been able to kind of re, kind of excavate some mm. of the memories. Some what is what does that stuff. process of excavation look like? So what they do is they'll ask like very general questions like, hey, where did you go to school? And what did you like to like? How did you dress? And what were your friends like? Stuff like that. Like, what did you do in your spare time? And. Uh, depending on my answer, she would go a little, little deeper. Uh, like, where did I get the clothes? 
and mm. like who bought them for me and stuff like Interesting. that. Interesting. So very like I mean these these are like these are very very specific questions. Like even if I even if I didn't have memory loss, I probably couldn't answer some of these questions about certain times. <laughs> That's fair. Like I don't remember what the fuck I wore, you know, two days ago. Ah, uh, now that I think about it, I don't think I did either. Probably the same thing I'm wearing now. Not to sound like gross, like not the exact thing, same. Same. You know, no, look. Something similar, you know. Look, I've been wearing. I'm, I'm, this is not a joke. This is not a lie. This is a reality of my life. Mm -hmm. I think I've been wearing the same pair of jeans every day for at least a month. Okay, so. I was actually recently told that that is actually the point of denim. So if anybody tells you that you're gross for wearing the same pair of jeans for like over a month, you tell them that that's just how they keep their shape. You might be you're my favorite caller really in the history of this entire stream. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear that. that Thank you very much for saying that. That's, that's the most incredibly reassuring because I... <laughs> It took. I, I was considering not not um, telling anyone that because I'm not joking. Right? I mean, I I, mean, I acknowledge that it's funny, but I it's it pro might be over a month. I mean, it's the same pair because I only got one pair of jeans that that fits me now. So it's I've been wearing that one for at least a month and a half. I mean, if it if it makes you. I, I know you said you were already reassured, but if it does make you feel better, I don't wear them consecutively, but I definitely, yes, chat, this is going to be really gross. I I try to wear my jeans like at least three or four times before they're washed, or if they just get like really smelly, I will wash them, but you know, you gotta, you gotta keep their, you gotta keep their shape, man. Now, what's your opinion on underwear? How many times in a row can you wear a pair of underwear? It depends. It really, really depends. Like, I, I train at the gym. Uh, I cannot re-wear those. That's just, that's just a one-way street to a yeast infection. But if, say, like, you know, you put on a pair of pants, or excuse me, a pair of underwear, and you're just lazing about in bed... For a day, and then you have like work the next yeah. day. You don't have to change yeah. them. You put a, yes, if you take a yes, shower, I like I highly recommend changing them. But like you know, it's okay as long as you don't sweat, as long as they don't smell. You're good. I agree. I agree. A day is a man-made concept, and it doesn't have any actual effect on the underwear itself. So I agree with you that unless if there was strenuous activity that, you know, uh, drenched the underwear in sweat, then you know you should be able to wear it for as long you know until it wears out. Anyway, what, what, if you don't mind me asking, what was the accident? I know you don't, I mean, do, do you, do you, do you even know? Oh, absolutely. So I, it was actually out of practice for the LARP. Um, we were lined up. It was about, I think we had like 12 ish people at the practice. There were about five people on each side, uh, in what's called a line fight or a ditch. I was, my partner at the time and I were training to, you know, like kind of be, you know, partners on field. We were working on teamwork. So I was at one side of his and I was trying a new kit. So like a sword and a shield and he had a two-handed sword and I had gotten a wound on my leg, like in game. So when you get a wound on your leg, you either you stand in one place or you kneel. So I decided to kneel. I was going to protect his flank with my sword, or, or excuse me, with my shield, and he would protect my sword side. He throws a shot that kind of goes in a U shape. So it goes down and then like through the other side. His sword goes a little too far down, ricochets off, the, off of the grass and just straight into my schnoz, like booger machine broke you know um at that point i had no idea what had happened one one minute i was holding a, uh, this borrowed sword and shield next time the next thing i knew i was looking at my lacrosse gloves and they were you know covered in blood and i remember thinking like oh i don't remember this having blood when i bought them at the plate again 
um, and then we had a, uh, an EMT who was also playing with us, and he, he, he kind of like, he kind of like strolls up to me, he's like, hey man, you good? I look out, up at him, I was like, yeah, I'm good, and he take a wait for a minute, he's like, mm, maybe you should go sit down. So I go sit down on the bench, he, you know, does his whole like triage, like, hey, how many fingers am I holding up, what year is it, all that good stuff. And, you know, answered his questions. And he's like, all right, um, I can't do anything here. I don't have any of my equipment. You should go to an urgent care. So the people I went with drove me to an urgent care. They were, it was maybe 6 p.m. at this point. We rolled up. They were just about to close. And they're like, hey, man, we got to go home. We're real tired. Go to the ER. And at this point, I'm extremely delirious, very concussed no real awareness of how concussed I am. So I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, whatever you say. Um, so at this point, I don't remember who contacted my parents. I think it was my partner because they were, they were pretty close at the time too. And so they picked me up. They dropped me off at the ER. I don't exactly remember what happened at the ER. I just remember them saying like, hey, you should probably get your, your nose set so your septum doesn't mess with you in the future. I'm like, okay, cool. Are you guys going to do that? <laughs> they were supposed to. They didn't. They just um, didn't do it? No. So now I have... Maybe, you're, like, in in this story, you're having a lot it. more trouble than I would have hoped finding medical attention. <laughs> They didn't do too terribly much. They just kind of looked at me and they're like, yep, that's broken. And then sent me home. Wow. And then they billed um, me like $1,500 or something. Really? They just looked at you and they billed you 1500 bucks? Basically. So hold on. So just to reiterate, uh, apologies for the graphic content warning. Uh, do, do... Did the fucking sore just went up your nose? Like, what? What? where was the impact? The impact was about... It's across the bridge of my nose where about, like, imagine a line from the corner of your right eye yeah. up towards your left temple. Up towards your left temple. So it's right smack dab on the bridge of my schnauz. Wow. And I have, I actually have a little uh, nerve damage. Like I can feel when things like poke, say like the, let's see, it was like the tip of my nose all the way up the the bridge to a little bit of my left eyebrow. I just, I can't really, I can feel when things touch it, but that's that's about it. Like it doesn't feel cold or hot. I can feel a little bit of a tingle when it's supposed to hurt. But that's about it. And your and I can barely breathe through my nose side. You can barely breathe through your nose. So it's it's like a twenty eighty favoring the right nostril, yeah. Did your partner feel and your partner it was his sword that struck you? Yeah. How did he feel about this? Was he like going was he is he feel guilty? Like what what are his thoughts? Are you still with him? No, so we're still, it's a little complicated with him. Um, I still care about him. I consider him one of my, like, I still care about him a lot. I know he still cares about me. Um, at the time, oh my gosh, he felt so freaking bad. I felt, I, I felt bad for how bad he felt. Uh, mm. One of his main concerns was, uh, He's like, oh my God, your dad's going to hate me, all of this. And I looked at him yeah, and I was like, yeah. buddy boy, my dad's going to think it's hilarious. And he did. He, did, did he, th he thought it was, fu he thought he it thought was, it was funny. Shit. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, it, it is. Like, I'm, I'm out here playing dork swords, you know, based off of, you know, Lord of the Rings. And, and your whole it, fucking I, I face gets rocked. Yeah. Like that's mm. a, that's one of the funniest things I cherish this memory. It's one of the funniest things that's ever happened to me. Well, I'm glad that uh, you have a good attitude about it. Um, uh, I mean, all, all all positives. You get a funny story. You get to forget what it was like when you were a stupid kid. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess the only thing is that you have this, I guess you could call it PTSD, whatever, from um, from LARPing. Do you think that you will LARP again I... or are you or have you retired? So I do still go to events. Like I, I keep, I keep active as much as I can. Like I sew a lot, so I make garb like tunics and cloaks and quilts and stuff like that. But when it comes to fighting, I think I've only fought at an event maybe twice since then. It's been mm. about I want to say it was five six years since I broke my nose. And I can spar. Like, there's. Uh, it depends on who I'm sparring. Like, I can't spar certain people, but there are some times where I can just suck it up and be like, all right, I do want to fight. I want to get on field. I want to be this badass, like, warrior chick, you know? And well, it's cool that fight, you got the. Oh, I was just going to say, it's cool that you've got the whole the sewing. Thing because you get to stay involved with the community even though and not have to fight. Oh, absolutely, and I'm very, I'm very thankful for that. And it's one of my, it's one of my favorite pastimes. Like I sew almost every day now, even if it's just like practicing sewing straight lines. Well, watch out for that needle. What did you say your name was? My name is Chase. Chase, uh, thank you very much for sharing your story. Is there anything else you want to say before we, before we go? Um. I I hope you have a great night and I enjoy I enjoy the way that your podcast is edited. I think it's quite lovely and your screener is very lovely as well. Thank you very much for all the kind words. I will try my best to have a good evening and uh, you do as well, Chase. Have a good night. Thank you. You too, guys. What's your name? My name's Will. Will. Uh, what's going on with you, Will? Tell me everything. Tell me nothing. Ah, uh, well, well, I've been calling since the beginning of the stream tonight, um, and I want to talk about a little bit of a, a medical issue that I recently went through. Apparently, it's pretty common. That's what everyone's been telling me, and I don't know. I'm not looking at the chat right now. I know how you feel about that. Um, sure. Uh, it's called a a polynidal cyst. I have fucking I have that? had a polynidal cyst. I have had, you had a that? polynidal cyst. You had yes, that. Uh, it's a little fucking. It's a cyst that's not inside of your asshole, but it's like no, right, right on the, the top, back, right at the crest. It's yes, right. It's right at the crest of your ass. Uh, okay. Well. Oh my god. So it is pretty common then, huh? I've had I, I had a pile, I had one right at the crest of your ass. It, it's hard. It feels like you have like a like a big fucking like lump. You can't you can barely sit down with it. It's no, it's it's not fun. Yes. Uh, well, mine had an uh, an abscess mm. that that I had to get like surgically cut, like lance and removed. Mm. Um, did you have Did you have to go through that too? I got lucky. I um I just took a bunch of antibiotics and it went away on its own. I I I I was told I might have to go in for surgery, but if the antibiotics didn't work, but the antibiotics ended up working. Uh yeah, yeah, you definitely got lucky. Um so I had to make my way to a like a priority care type place. Mhm. Now I uh, did a little research, um, <clears throat> you know, pulled it up like on my phone, showed them exactly what I had, and yeah, they had to, you know, go ahead and and cut me open, lance it. Um, they said uh, the doctor said it was probably about like two cups of like pus and blood that came out. Um. But that you wasn't said the worst two, You said two cups of blood. About two cups of pus and blood. Mm. Yes, sir. Did he say how much? Did he say like the percentage of what percent was cups, pus and what percent was blood? Uh, not exactly. I'd probably say about seventy thirty pus to blood ratio. Seventy thirty 
in favor of pus. Yeah, no, yeah, probably in favor yeah, of in favor of pus. Um, where do where do where do you even dispose of that much pus and blood? I feel like two cups is a, is well, a uh, solid amount. You know, like when you go to the doctor, there's always that little bin, with, like the biohazard bin. Ah, there's pus and blood I, in there. I'm pretty sure that's where I went. I was I was in so much trauma. Like, okay, so the cutting of it open wasn't that bad. Yeah, like. It was more of a relief, you know. Oh yeah, um, I bet that I so bet getting that fucker drained felt pretty good. That felt great, um, but the worst is that with the abscess, they have to pack it with with disinfectant gauze. They have to pack the wound. So, just to paint a picture for you, um, yeah, I'm laying on this chair, belly down, uh, ass out, ass, ass exposed. Um, and this doctor of, you know, I've never met in my life is just stuffing this open wound with, with disinfectant gauze and is the most excruciating pain in my life. Like mm. traumatizing. Um, <clears throat> and, Keep in mind, this is at, like, a priority care type place. So there's, like, people in the waiting room, you know? <clears throat> and I'm in there just hollering, just, like, in so much pain. Um, and they could probably hear you out there. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, they could hear me. That probably was very unnerving uh, for them. I, w- I would assume it was... Um, on my way out, like after, uh, you know, leaving the place, I feel great afterwards. After the fact, it's like, yeah. You know, okay, so, so after everything, so, after the most excruciating, so the gauze it sounded like was the hor- was the horrible part, but then after everything oh is said God. and done, you feel good. Yeah, yeah. On my way out, I'm like, you know, I'm strutting out of this place, but uh, you know, I'm getting all these crazy stares from all the people in the waiting room there. Mm-hmm. Like, right, but you got this. But you also, you, it's, you got this big smile on your face, right? Oh. So they're like, I don't know what he was doing in there, but I want that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably a little bit. But um, yeah. So, so you know, they they say like, you know, leave the packing in for like two days, and then come back, and you know, we'll we'll see what's up with it. Uh, <laughs> mm. Go back two days later, and uh, I'm like, okay, they're gonna take it out, and then everything's gonna be good, right? Yep, that didn't happen. Like, oh, nope. They're like, oh, we have to pack it again, and my stomach just turned inside out, just thinking like, oh my god, like I have to go through that again. Um. Yeah, similar thing, like, yeah, I'm in there screaming, like, it, it hurts like hell. Um, Why does it hurt so much that they are packing, ga- or, or is it like a hole in your ass crest, or like, what is what are they packing? Pretty much they have to, um, because if they let the wound close up with an abscess, like when the cyst is, is an abscess, then right. it'll just come back and they'll just have to cut it open again and repeat the process. So they have to pack it to keep the wound open <laughs> so that mm. it can continue to drain and then, you know, so so it won't come back. Mm. Mm. Um, so, so I now, go back wait a minute. So time. when they cut it open, though, yeah. when they cut it open, do they put you to sleep? Nope. Because this was kind of like... Does that cost extra? An emergency. Like, I had to get this thing cut out. Like, it was so bad. Yeah. You know? I mean, Mm -hmm. um, he, like, did look... Like, he injected it with, like, a numbing type of thing. I don't know what exactly it is. I'm not a doctor, you know? Novocaine, perhaps? Something like that. But he said it's really not going to have any effect because of how deep it was. Like, I'm going to be in pain regardless 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so, okay, so how is oh. how is your ass doing now? Like all all said and done, after it's all over, how's how's the crest of your ass? You know, the crest of my ass is is much better. I mean, uh, no pain, no gain. You know, like I hundred percent better. Beautiful. Um, and uh, you know, the aftercare was pretty crazy because my fiance had to uh help me like take care of it you know mm-hmm. what i mean like putting like covering it up and everything with cream and so, all that bless her yeah yeah dude she's a hero mm-hmm. uh you've given me well listen you've given me a um because i had a polynidal cyst and i'm um um you've given me a, a greater uh appreciation for those antibiotics did you did you try you yeah, could yeah. did you try the antibiotics before they did the whole thing with the gays and the, all that? Gauze? No, uh, like after they had cut it out and everything, you know, they prescribed me antibiotics, so uh, that would prevent it from like from coming back. Um, and uh, would you say your name was? was on two different Will. <laughs> Will. Well, Will, thank you very much for. Um, for sharing uh is, is there anything else that you want to say before we go i uh, just want to shout out everyone in the chat want to shout out uh you lyle Gek. thank you um uh, you know it's crazy i, I feel blessed because it oh, is my first night joining the stream and calling in um and everyone who's been trying to call in i just say uh you know don't give up like you guys, you guys got this, and you know I love you all, and I hope the best for everyone. Beautiful, thank you very much for the kind words, Will. You have a good rest of the night. Are uh, you too? Thank. Hello. Hi. Hey. Can you hear me? Oh Hi. yeah. What's up? What's your name? Uh, my name's Bree. Your name is Bree. What's yes. up, Bree? How's um? <clears throat> Sorry, my it's the my the foot thing again. Oh, I'm figuring it yeah. out though. I think. I, I... Oh, what were you gonna say? I think I know what. Uh, I think I know what somebody was talking about in the chat. Neuropathy. Sometimes yeah, it can just know... be bad circulation. Bad circulation. Ah, yeah. Fuck it. I'll. I'll just cut it off it's tomorrow. Fine. What's it's going fine. on with you, Bree? Enough about me and my stupid body. Not my. That I actually weird, also just hurt my little body. I didn't hurt my foot though. I burned my arm making a quesadilla. You burned your arm making a quesadilla. I did indeed. How often? And uh, how often do you make quesadillas? Uh, I made one yesterday and I made one today. It's been about a month since I made quesadillas since then. And isn't it amazing the human brain? You can go a full month without making quesadillas, and yet when and then when you go to make them again, you you still remember how to make them. I am pretty shocked by that because I um, I do not remember a lot of things. You don't remember a lot of things. Do you remember the last thing you forgot? Shockingly, I do because it was important. Mm, what was it? Um, I had until the fourth to call in and get a service protection agreement signed for a car that I recently got. Um, and I realized as I was leaving to get into my car today that it was the first and that I only had a couple more days to do that. Oh, well, I mean, you got it done, though, right? Yeah. Today. You know, look, I don't. I, what's your name again, Bree? I don't blame you, Bree. Uh, 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 life demands far too much of us. Um, I, I, I myself can only be bothered to do one thing a day. Uh, so that's three hundred and sixty-five things a year, which is a lot, I think. But um, yeah, I agree. I mean, no, I don't blame you for forgetting that. I I have parking tickets that I haven't paid, um, uh, from like you know twenty nineteen. Oh 
man. Parking. You know how they say to. Area. You know how they say to build multiple streams of income. Yeah. Yeah. I do. So I do the opposite with multi. I have multiple streams of the of uh, outcome from various parking tickets that I've not yet paid. I I just don't agree with parking tickets. I think Why not? Stupid. Why do you think they're stupid? You know, I used to live in like a, a college town, um, and you couldn't park on the on the road at all. But that was like the only place to park. And I didn't get a. I almost got a parking ticket, but I got my car, my mom's car booted. Not even mine. A boot on my mom's car. They made me pay like a hundred dollars to get it off when it was somewhere that I was allowed to park. But I, I guess they informed people, not me, that they were doing construction. Um, so nobody was allowed to park there. Hmm. And I just thought that was unnecessary. So on the call screening, you said that you were uh, training to be a mortician. I did. I did say that. Uh, and how's that going? You know, it's going pretty well. Um I don't know. Um, when I started, I didn't think I was going to go to college. And then I ended up going to college because this is what I really wanted to do. Mm. Um, and it's been it's been pretty good. You d- actually I have, I have two questions prompted by what you just said. You why did you initially not want to go to college? Uh, I thought <laughs> I thought it was worthless and that it would be a waste of my time because I'm not I wouldn't consider consider myself a very uh smart uh gifted with knowledge book smart that type of person me. sure study oh, yeah. studious academic list so so uh, uh to bring me on a journey through the mind of um somebody who actively desires to become a mortician where does that where does that desire come from so weirdly enough uh i started looking into kind of like the death field when I was a young, a young kid, a young lad. Mm. Um, I was probably nine and I wanted to do forensics really bad. Um, and I went to a college in Illinois for, uh, an open house. Yeah. That's what it's called. Went for an open house and talked to some of the people who had just graduated and some of the professors and they were like, yeah, we can't get fucking jobs. We've been doing this for like 14 years and I'm just a professor. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I've wasted most of my life wanting to do this. Um, And then when I was leaving, this guy like kind of beckoned me and he was like, hey, you want to, you want to mess with dead people? Mm. Uh, You should look into this deeper and it's only four years instead of a million i was like oh okay that sounds that sounds nice when you talk about a man beckoning you from like a dark alley or something i imagine he says to you something like i heard that you like death actually he did it was really weird really that's what he said he said i that's what he said verbatim he said i heard that you like death yeah it was very creepy because it was kind of like dimly lit in his area so he like very like quickly and quietly approached me and he's like, I got something to show you. And I was like, uh, I don't know if I should follow you, but I'm in a, I'm in a well-populated space, so I guess that's fine. So you're hanging out with dead people all the time. I am. I actually live in a funeral home. Do you ever d- uh, develop crushes on them? Like you find a dead guy that uh, you think is cute and you're like, I wish I got to know this guy. So far, that has not happened. Mm-hmm. Is that like, I'm curious, is I, that like a breach of, like, uh, code or something? Uh, you know, probably moral code. Sure, um, sure. For me personally, I don't know how many people would mind that. Um, I've heard would mind, weird things, like, like, oh, really, what, what have you heard? Uh... <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I don't know if I could... Actually, yeah. Okay, I'll just go ahead. Um, go for it. There was this kid at school. We got... We usually get in older people um, at mm-hmm. school. He's like, man, I bet he was a, 
a stallion back in the day. Mm. I was like, you know, I'm seeing this man and I just, I couldn't imagine saying that or thinking about that right now. So there was a kid, there was another student at your school studying death and they brought in cadavers, right? Yes. Yeah. And the kid was looking at the cadaver's penis. He was just looking at all of him. We have a modesty cloth that we have to put on them. Um, okay. So I will or not, I will not say if that modesty cloth was on or off. I'll let you. I don't know. I feel like, that. look, if I'm a dead body and I'm on my way out, like to never, I mean, because look, if you're a dead body, you're on your way out to never being, your body never gets seen again. So, you know, I mean, just me yeah. personally, me personally. If somebody said that about my dead body, I'll be like, I, l- good, let me get a couple more compliments to take to the grave with me for the road, because that's the end. That was the, that's the last guy to compliment that guy's dead body before it's in the ground forever. That's what I've been thinking about, too, lately. I'm like, I don't know. I just came to the realization yesterday, actually, mm-hmm. um, that people who I don't intend to hear me um, are always watching me. I have mm. a class of about 50 people and I sit like right up front and I was like, man, if people are perceiving me like this in life, you know, when I die and if I get cremated or buried or something, whoever's handling my body is also going to have like an idea or a thought about me as I'm going. And that has been something that has, like, really confused me because I've always thought, I don't know why, it's like an object permanence thing, I guess, that only my intended targets could hear me. And I realized yes, that was only really people somebody. that you intend yeah. to perceive you actually are the ones that perceive you. And in reality, it is it's far not the case. Yeah, especially, like, right now. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking I'm having a, a one-on-one chat with you, and there's there's a lot of people watching. No, I no look. I mean, with something like this, it's like I mean, <laughs> pro- ultimately, probably with the podcast, whatever. There's probably whatever. It's, you know, yeah, sure. There's a couple there's thousands of people listening to this voice right now, but it doesn't. I don't know. They're not. In, they're not in. They're not with us right now. They're computer people. They're not even real. That's true. That is true. In real uh, life, is there anything? Worse, no, in real life, it is way worse. That's why, um, you yeah, know, that's why it's so easy to drown it out when you know it's like you look at the Twitch thing and you look at the podcast thing and you see the numbers and you're like, this is computer people, you know, this is the internet. It's not real. What did you say your name was? Bree. Bree, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Is there anything else that you want to say to the people before we go? Uh, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, you know, you hear it all the time, but what you're doing is wonderful. We love you. Uh, we support you. And one day, uh, I hope that one of us could be your therapy gecko. Hmm. Well, thank you very much for all the kind words, Bree. I, I appreciate that very much. And um, thank you for all the um, good that you do for uh, dead people with big penises. Thank you. Have a good rest of the night. I guess. You too. It is an interesting thing being perceived. You know what? But it's, I, and people mention this with the podcast, right? Or in the show, they're like, oh, I'm being, you know, people call in and they, they're like nervous because they're being, they feel themselves being perceived. And when I'm here right now, the whole time I'm here and I'm talking, I don't know what it is. I can't describe it. I don't know if it's a, I felt this way when I, when there was no one watching this. And I feel this way when there's people. I, I feel very at ease while I'm streaming for whatever reason with all these people. I feel very at ease in this very, very specific situation in which I am wearing a gecko costume and live streaming on the internet in this chair, in this room. feel very at ease. But if I'm walking down a fucking sidewalk and one person is walking 
towards me, but they're very far away, but they're walking in my direction. I start, I, I don't know why, but I'll get nervous. I'll try to, I'll, I'll feel too perceived by this one guy or, per, or lady with a dog, whatever it is. And I'll try to move to the other side of the street, of the street. But this, and that, for whatever reason, that makes me feel like I'm being perceived too much. But this, you know, I mean, I'm alone in my house right now talking into a stick at the end of the day. So, I don't know. Maybe there's some sort of, I don't know, maybe some, there's some psychological explanation for that. But, hello? Hello. Oh, I'm going to shit myself. <laughs> Why are you going to shit yourself? Because I'm excited, bro. You were on my top Spotify rap. I've been listening to your oh, shit nonstop. Thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate Hello? that very much. Um, hmm. What is your name? Ketamine. And how did you get that name? Were you born with that name or did you acquire it later in your life? I've acquired it. And how did you acquire it? I hung out with a bunch of wooks. You Are you familiar with, with the phrase wooks? I'm slightly familiar with the phrase "wook." I, I used to, um, I had a brief phase, and when I say brief, I'm talking like, like in the, like the span of a couple weeks, where I was into, um, you know, jam bands or whatever, uh, like the Grateful Ooh. whatever, and the and the Donny Darko the and the the, the Ween yep. and all that. And I and I'm pretty sure a wook is somebody who's really into those bands. Is that? An accurate, an accurate I would take that statement. As, I would take that as an accurate description. Although nowadays, I feel like it also leans more towards the uns 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 EDM people. Interesting, because I feel like EDM and jam band people. Well, not no, not the people. The music is very different. That's very true, but there's overlappingness within both categories. Interesting, and what what would you say that overlappingness is? Uh, probably drugs and dancing. <laughs> drugs and dancing. Um, what kind of drugs are we talking about here? I mean, your average things. You got your MDMA. Mm -hmm. You got your ketamine. You got mm -hmm. your, I don't know, all the good things. Test all the things. Test kits only. Now, ketamine. Uh, I don't know a lot about ketamine, but I've heard that it's similar. I've heard... It's like a horse tranquilizer. That might be wrong. I don't, I don't know anything about anything, but is that is it a horse so tranquilizer? It, it def it's a horse tranquilizer. Um, so I have – there's so many fun jokes to be made about that. It's very popular down in the south, so we got horses and horse tranquilizers. A lot of people like justifying it by saying that it helps with, like, depression because there are medical, like, depression treatments with ketamine, which are super cool. But these bitches ain't using it medically. They're turning up on Tuesdays. They're turning up on Tuesdays. Yup. I have I have heard that it could be used medically for like depression and stuff. It can. It's very helpful for chronic pain. I can okay. attest it. Mm -hmm. Um. So how often are you out uh, uh, doing doing ketamine? Uh, never anymore. Never I just watch anymore. everyone else do it. And sit there. Okay, so you quit. <laughs> Yeah, we had the fun period, but I almost died sure. partying, so I got over it, and now I just go out and go to shows sober. Super fun. Um, that's good to hear. So, well, okay, so at one point, you were doing ketamine enough to have earned the moniker of ketamine. Of a look. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, tell me about the night that you almost died. What happened? Ooh. That was fun. So that was actually on Molly. Um, <laughs> so I have a heart condition. Um, don't do drugs with great heart condition. Great place to start. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's a great place to start. So um, I think I did like did a bunch of Molly at an EDM concert. Got back to a shitty hotel and started turning blue from losing blood circulation to my whole body. Oh, Jesus. Um, so that was fun. Yeah, I ended up dislocating a few ribs in my chest permanently from it. So that's lit. Um, you dislocated like, ribs in your chest, like did you? Yeah. Was was it was it like the Molly dislo went into your body and took your let me ribs apart, well, or you like? What, what happened? 
So basically, there's a few things at play here. There's a collagen disorder that makes your joints dislocate every single day. That's a thing that people live with. Just a thing. Interesting. It's a genetic disorder. And then also a heart condition. So basically, you see in horror movies how you see people's veins pop out of their bodies. Like yes. like an alien. That's and what happened gym. to my whole body. Yeah, mm. I could see like all of the veins in my whole body. I'm pretty sure I didn't go to the hospital because bad bitch didn't want to call medical help. Always call for medical help. Um, uh, you didn't want to call. Why didn't yeah. you want to call for medical help? Were you embarrassed that they would make fun of you for your broken rib cage? I mean, partially. I think I was afraid of getting in trouble with the law due to the scenario, and also was like just like my brain was like, "Don't send me to rehab. Don't send me to rehab." <laughs> so okay, but so now but you you no myself. longer you now no longer do ketamine. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do anything, and then I also go to shows and am able to still surround myself with it and say no, which I think is pretty badass. I think that's pretty nice, too, because a lot of the time, I feel like if you're trying to quit something, you gotta... I mean, everyone's sort of built different with their ability, uh, their their willpower and whatnot, but I feel like it's a whole thing to be able to go into into the environment constantly again where where the drugs are being done and still be able to not only resist doing them but also have a good time without them that's the real struggle bus but i work a lot of shows now and i uh spin fire at shows and perform so you got to be sober to do that Hmm. um see i don't know if i could do that you know, there's certain. I think here's, you let me ask you, listen, before think, we go, before we go, I actually need to know a question from you. Do you think if yeah. you if there's a certain genre of music or a certain or I, I wouldn't even limit this to music, a thing, any activity that not that you enjoy better when you're under the influence of drugs, but that you only enjoy under the influence of drugs. Do you believe that you truly enjoy that activity? Do I believe that I truly enjoy it sober, or do you believe that you can truly only... Uh, that's a big question there, Gek. Will you rephrase it for me? It, 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 uh, what I'm saying is if you have an activity that you like, but you only like it when you're impaired. Not you like it more... Like yeah, I look, I like, really like, like I like going to the you movies, don't... but I like it more when I'm stoned. But I don't only like it when I'm stoned. But if you have a thing that you yeah. only like when you're impaired, do you like it? My big thing is, if you have people that only want to hang out with you when you're fucked up, they're not your friends. And if you can only do something when you're fucked up, then it's not really fun. Well, there we go. Thanks for calling, Ketamine. Yeah. No problem, Gek. Be well. I hope nobody notices that I'm on Ketamine right now. (laughs) Hello? Hello? What's up? Wait, am I? Yes. Am I actually on? You're on. Holy, holy crap! What's going on, dude? That's awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been trying to call in for like a month and a half now. Holy Here crap! Here you are. <laughs> this is it. This is the moment. It's a lot of pressure. Yes, Here. it is. <laughs> no, it's, oh, um... no, I don't need pressure. No, no, no. Look, um, well, Gabby, can I ask you something before we go into this? Because, you uh, you know, I mean, what if, okay, if this call in your mind went perfectly right, what would that, well, I mean, what would that even look like? Honestly, just being on the call itself is just perfect. perfect. <laughs> That's perfect because that's the thing is people I people all the time they come in here they're like I don't want to fuck this up and I'm like there's no objective there's no goal there's nothing to fuck up so you've already won and lost at the same time because there's no game yeah uh, what's going on Gabby what uh, what did you call in to talk about um just honestly to get like a uh, a perspective on something that's happy in my life. From somebody that doesn't know me. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so I work at a a job that I, I put in my two weeks already, but it it's it paid me really well. I was making like eighteen an hour, but 
the only thing about it was the job itself wasn't bad. It was the people. Mm. And like, I've been very anxious because like, you know, like I said, I put in my two weeks, I'm going to a lower paying job. And like, I can't tell if it was a bad idea or not because it is going to make financial everything a little rough doing that. Mm -hmm. So you went from a higher paying job to a lower paying job primarily because you you couldn't stand the people you were working with at that higher paying job. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's a bad decision at all because, you know, uh, look, work is like, what, 100% of your time, something like that? You know, you're just there for hours and hours and hours. If you're going to be somewhere for hours and hours and hours, you know, you shouldn't, you should... Uh, you should enjoy being there, or at the very least, yeah. if you can't get there, I mean that's a that's a whole place to want to get to, enjoying being there, right? But at the very bare minimum, you shouldn't absolutely fucking hate being there. Yeah. Did you absolutely fucking hate being there? Yeah, I, I honestly, there had been mornings before I went to my job and put my two weeks in. That I just kind of cried before going in because I hated. So oh, much. you did the right, Gabby. You did the right thing. Uh, that's, what's that's the new nice gig? Tell me about the new gig, though. What's 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 what was so appealing about the new gig? Um, it's a smaller store. Um, it it's a lot more friendlier. Like they're kind of built on the actual like being a family working together, communicating, and it's sure. a lot less strict on all of the rules so like if i don't want to take a 15 minute break two two hours into my shift that's okay as long as i eventually get to a break i want to get yelled at for it and the expectations are a lot less so you you like the rule that you don't have to take breaks yeah because sometimes it messes up my flow whenever i'm like going at it and then i have to stop take a break then it takes me a while to want to get back to work you know well, it sounds like you're an employer's dream. <laughs> I like to think so, yeah. Um, are there any other, like, rules that you hated about the old place that you like about the new one that they don't have or whatever? Um, mostly the fact of it wasn't, like, a set rule, but the way the management was set up, it was very strict. Mm-hmm. Like, you couldn't even look at your manager wrong without being up for coaching or firing which was just no well, fun gabby you know i'm glad that um uh, you know i mean look take solace in uh no it was a good decision if you're crying before you are going into work you should fucking quit yeah um is there anything else you want to talk about gabby before we go um, not really. That was that was kind of all. I know it's kind of lame, but you know it, it did. No, help I don't a think lot. that's. <laughs> la- why do you? Th- I'm really curious, actually. Why do you think that's lame? Um, I've been listening to your podcast since you started it. I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't really have time to watch your streams as much, and like, there's just so many interesting calls, and then I just call in about like, oh, did I make the right decision about me quitting my job type thing. No, I mean, I mean, uh, I think this is interesting. I mean, look, it's 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 not like an epic tale, but it's reflective of a common human experience that people have all yeah. the time. So it it had it had it was valuable to share in of that, I believe. Yeah, and it, it's definitely like a, a hard decision, but I feel like. Because my boyfriend's done similar things. He's quit workplaces that weren't, like, the best situation management was ass and stuff like that. And it's, it's it's harder for some people, but I feel like once you get confirmation that was a good idea and you're able to move forward, it does help a lot. Because stress yeah, can make yeah. you physically sick. I've learned that. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear you made the right decision, Gabby, and uh, appreciate you calling. Of course. Hello, Bobby. <gasps> Whoa! Oh my gosh! Hi. How are you, Bobby? I'm good. Oh my god, this is my first time calling in. I can't fucking believe it. 
<laughs> How are you? Um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, this is like so surreal. I heard myself you saying like hi Bobby in like the other room where we're watching it. <laughs> what uh what's going on with you, Bobby? Oh my gosh, Gek. Well, I recently, well, fairly recently, got, like, my big girl job. I graduated college and everything, so I got my big girl job and everything, and so I have to, like, the new people have to, like, work on weekends, which isn't, like, normal, Mm -hmm. and one of my coworkers is either... Like, uh, after we take our lunch break, is either coming in extremely high or extremely drunk. (laughs) And I am stuck on what the heck to do about it. Mm. Because I'm not exactly a snitch, but at the same time, this is like the type of guy that when they get drunk, he gets kind of confrontational. So I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Mm. Right. That's what I was going to ask is uh, to what degree does his uh, intoxication, do you believe, affect uh, his ability to to perform his job or actually more importantly, your ability to perform your job? I mean, I can he's my so our work has this stupid thing where they don't believe in like closed off cubicles. So the so like our office is entirely open like there's no privacy whatsoever um we can hear everything like the person next to us does and like it's meant so that like whenever a new person comes in they can easily like ask questions and shit like that um it's supposed to be like more welcoming but it's kind of more awkward (laughs) um so he so like anytime something happens I can easily like hear it and everything and it's just kind of awkward hearing hearing him like talk to customers on the phone and being like so like you know like the typical slurring shit like that drunk people do or high people do um of like just can't say any sort of words and like what there was one because I work a lot of weekends there was one weekend where he was like stumbling to go to the fucking bathroom even Mm. and we were all just like oh my god is so and so like drunk or something and i'm kind of curious so like is your supervisor not there like is there never is he never drunk when like Mm. somebody uh is around that would have a problem with that yeah so whenever our supervisor is pretty much never there on the weekends so like he's not really gonna ever get caught unless someone like brings it up pretty much um so that's like the other thing is like unless like he'll know if like i bring it up or um someone else does because there's only like a few of us that are ever there like in the office with him when he's doing this shit Mm -hmm. So Which you have I'm a problem like, where a you don't want to be a a snitch, but uh, it's, you're like, it is probably not good. Honestly, like it's such a boring fucking job that I would love to get drunk during it. Like as soon as like whenever I have my hour lunch break. What well, hey, love to be? It's like- now you know <laughs> that you can do it and not get fired. That's true. I know that like none of us are snitches after this has been that's going one on. Of, that's one. Like, that's look. That's that is. I, I mean, look. Fired. I'm not saying it's the correct <laughs> takeaway from this. I'm not saying that there even is a correct takeaway from this. But it is a potential takeaway from this that you now mm-hmm. have have seen proof that you can get fucking hammered, go into the bank, <laughs> and do your gig, and nobody gives a shit. It's That's kind true. of a power. It's actually, I mean, this guy, he's actually kind of 
inspirational in, in, in that sense. I if totally that's how you agree. want to look at it. <laughs> I wish I could. It's just, like I said, or like maybe like I didn't like emphasize it enough. It's just like the fact that he gets kind of confrontational while he is. Does he get confrontational like, towards the customers I'm, or does he does he get confrontational towards you? Towards us, yeah. Tell me it tell me specifically, what was the last confrontation that you had with him while he was drunk? This was like whenever I I didn't really think that he was drunk because I couldn't fathom. Like, I've been working, like, retail jobs all my life up until, like, I graduated and got this job. So, like, I couldn't even, like, it didn't, like, cross my mind that people would actually get drunk, like, during, like, you know, like, a professional job and shit like that. So, Hold on, like, wait, so wait, wait, oh what, what, tell me, tell me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, we're getting, like, sidetracked. What, what was the last confrontation you had with him, specifically? It was me, like, jokingly being, like, Cause he like stumbled a little bit over his feet and I was like, okay, I'm clumsy. Like I do that shit too. So I jokingly was like, oh my God, blank. Are you drunk or something? And he was just like straight up to me like, fuck you. Of course I'm not like, but also. Huh. So, okay. So he's also openly denying shit, like, it. Blurring. Yeah. But d- the entire time, like while he's saying that he's like slurring mm-hmm. his words heavily and I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Well, what'd you say your name was? Bobby. 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 Listen, Bobby, uh, take a day. Do mm-hmm. like a, you know, do like a shot. I mean, what you said, you you said it's your dream to get drunk at work. You wish you could do what he does. Take <laughs> okay, a shot so before <laughs> work. No, take a shot before you go into work. Um, okay. Okay. See how you feel. The, don't actually do this. See how you feel. And then, if you can, if you can handle that, you know, next time you take two, don't actually, don't actually do this. And then, if you can handle that, take four, and see, just find your limits. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Don't actually do this. Get high. Get crossfaded next time. See if you can handle that. You might improve your your okay. your day to day life. You know, it might make work I'll more have fun. To, like- have someone teach me how to like smoke weed every time i've tried like i just well thank I you very much for so calling bobby to the point that like i throw up so <laughs> and uh i appreciate you sharing you have a wonderful rest of the night thank you thank you i appreciate it grateful to be alive not everyone's alive most people are dead how does it make me feel that most people are dead? I think it's good that most people are dead. Not because they were bad people or uh, anything like that. It's good It's good that we all die. Because, look, you really want to do this forever? I lo- And I say that I love being alive. I really do. I love being alive. I'm excited that I get to continue to be alive for many more years. That sounds... I'm ecstatic. I'm, th- I'm gonna think of deep. I'm gonna take a breath right now. <sighs> that felt good. It's good stuff. I'm gonna touch my body. I'm a. I'm a whole guy. I'm a person. Ex- I exist in the world. I'm chilling. It's nice to be alive. But I don't want to do this forever. I don't want to be alive. Being alive, I would rather. I would rather die right now than live forever. Think about that. Would you rather die right now or or live forever? Living forever would just be too just be too much. It'd be depressing. Everyone else died. You know what? Because here's the thing about living forever. Everyone else died. Everyone else dies. You're like the if you live for you'd be the only one ever in the history. You wouldn't just be the only human. You'd be the only organism ever to not fucking die. You don't want to be the guinea pig of that experiment? I will take the tried, true, tested way of leaving this earth, death, easily, over, you know, because that's been tested. That's been ran through the, 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 the gamut. 
by billions of things already. It's a tested way, method of die, of leaving. But living forever is too much. Hello? Hello? How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. How are What's, you? Um... Um, I'm okay. I'm I'm um uh chilling out in overtime. What's um what's new with you? Yeah, you're definitely in OT again? right now. Uh Leonard. But you know, first of all I gotta say, did you hire you've hired a a woman to answer calls now or something? Uh that's 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 it's Kay uh... Lizard. She's oh, she's gotcha. uh, one of the all call right. screeners. All right. That's, She's doing an excellent job. This is a, a new thing. Yeah. It's a new thing. Um, also, I like the, the om- ominous music that you've been putting on as well. I tried to change it to something less <clears> ominous, <throat> but I, I don't know how to use the computer. No, I like it. It's good. It fits. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. What's going on, Leonard? Yeah. Uh, not too much. Just working on a painting right now. Um, been listening throughout the night. Leonard, you had a specific so, uh, thing that I that I saw that you wanted to talk about. <clears throat> right, right, yeah. Recently, uh, found out like pretty much I broke up a, a marriage, apparently, with some girl that apparently had children and a family and all that, you know. Hmm. Um. Yeah. You broke up a marriage. Yeah, yeah. This this girl, she had a dating app, um, and uh, I don't really take any of that too seriously, right? Sure, sure. And so I was just hanging out with one girl, and um, <clears throat> her husband, apparently, he was following me for a while on my socials, and um, I would bring it up to her, like, who is this guy? Because I see a lot of photos of you guys together and everything and one minute she's like oh that's my coworker, uh that's my friend uh my ex she, you know she would say all these excuses and i was just like oh okay whatever you know because uh i wasn't trying to get in a relationship with her um but yeah she like uh wanted to get in a relationship with me which was kind of interesting and so you know um every once in a while uh kind of have her over through the rotation and uh you know she would always want to you know have sex and such and i was and so wait a minute so her husband which you don't know that it's her husband at this point is following at, at you on social at the time you didn't and he's following you on social media yeah yeah i have like an art instagram yeah he was following all that and uh um yeah and there's like how did uh, he find... pictures of them together okay but wait so i understand so how did all right so this this married woman is on dating apps looking to have an affair yeah she finds you. Okay. You guys start hanging out. At wh- why? Why is her husband? You see her Instagram. You see her with a guy. What? How does he start? F- how does he even find out about you and start following you? How does that? Ma- that does that doesn't. Line I, don't, up I have no idea. He well, he must have been suspicious, or maybe it happened before, um, where he was just looking through her followers, maybe or something, and. Uh, yeah, he was kind of just following me and looking at my stuff, apparently. And uh, she always told me it was like her her ex or a coworker or whatever, right? So sure. I was just kind of like, whatever, you know? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't trying to get in a relationship. It didn't really mean much to me. So, so um, how did you... Um... You know, okay, yeah. so there's sort of signs, there's suspicions, but you're brushing them off. And, and at what point does um, everything come to a head? Yeah, so then one night, um, you know, 
I'm painting and I get a bunch of uh, direct messages from this guy saying, uh, are you sleeping with this girl? And uh, I was like, yeah, you know, sometimes. I mean, I've done it in the past, not really recently. Like, she's slept with me and she comes over. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, she would, like, buy me food. She would bring me over food, take me to, like, doctor's appointments and shit. Like, she, well, uh, she was very she's very invested. She was, which is... She's taking you to doctor's appointments? <laughs> Well, I thought I had COVID, yeah. Well, I had pink eye. <clears throat> and, yeah. Why would, so, hold on, yeah, she hold was on, doing hold that. On, it, hold I have on, no idea. Hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Leonard, you're making absolutely yeah. no sense to me right now. Uh, okay. okay. You thought you had pink eye. No, I did. From a, This other girl gave me pink eye and she didn't tell me. Bunch of girls not telling me what's going on. All right, so Apparently. hold on. I, here's what I don't understand: is you say you're not looking for a relationship. You say you're ba you're basically like hooking up with this girl that you met on a dating app, but yet, yeah, you think you have pink eye. You think you have very contagious disease, and so you call mm -hmm. the girl you've been hooking up with and <laughs> ask her to drive you to the doctor. <laughs> well, the pink eye I had was not contagious. No, but you didn't know. No, I'm. But Leonard, you're, I'm speaking upon the knowledge you had at the time. You at the time have the knowledge that you have pink eyes. So you call this lady. For, I I don't I I I don't even know. I don't even know if we have time to understand. Okay, well this dynamic. No, so listen, this girl. I already went to the doctors and had medicine, and I was taking the medicine. All right, she comes over again after that. And she's like, yeah, sure, I'll take you over there. And it wasn't contagious. And that was All right, was so you knew COVID. at the time. That um, you, all right, so you go to the you think you have pink eye. You go to the doctor. The doctor says, yeah, you do, but it's not contagious. And you're like, great, I can keep yeah. working on with this lady. I mean, pretty much. She just always wanted to hang out with me. So I was like, you know, sure. I'm down to hang out. I just I needed to That's clarify that, yeah. Leonard. Leonard, you got to. Right, right. You yeah. got, meet me halfway on some of this. Leonard. No, I get you. I feel you. Okay, so um, what happened? How yeah, did you learn? Right, so this guy's DMing you, <clears throat> and um, what is what? What sort of happens after that? Um, pretty much, she was like, or he was like, "Is she sleeping with you?" And um, I was like, "Who are you?" And he was like, "Um, I'm married to this girl. We have kids." She told me that she had a, what do you call it? Um, a f affair? She was having people, she was having people rent out her apartment and they had kids, but those were actually her kids. So he was like, we have children, we're married, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, this is news to me. I had no idea. I, you know, she told me you were this and that, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, and I was like, yeah, you know, in the past, um, yeah, we've like slept together and everything. And um, he was so. Like, how uh, did he he well, respond? Did he was he upset with you, or did you explain that you did not know? Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I had no idea. This is news to me, man. Um, I was like, I'm sorry, you're having to go through this, um, you know. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, you know, we, we have slept together in the past. I'm not really interested in all that anymore and whatnot. And mm -hmm. he was so, like, he, he so, was I mean, look, to kind of, to kind of wrap things up and, and get to yeah. where we are right now, uh, are you, have you made contact with this woman ever again? Uh, no, I told him to, uh, to pretty much like press her on this and she, she blocked me. So. Which, I mean, I didn't want to talk to her anyways, but... So, how are you myself, feeling you know? about this? Because when we first picked up the... When I first started talking to you 10 minutes ago, you seemed like, um... You seemed like like you had some, some guilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel... Well, I mean, I told him, I was like, man, I feel bad. Like, sorry you have to go through this, you know? But, um... 
yeah, you know, I don't know. I was lied to throughout the whole thing. Yeah, I, I <laughs> so that, that I kind of sucks. You didn't know. You didn't know. But, you, didn't uh, lie to, you know. Yeah, but um, I don't know. Kind of, it, it. I don't know how. That's why I wanted to call and and talk to you. Is is like I don't know how to really like think about yeah. it. You know, because uh, well, I, I feel well, like look, I mean, I I, it, I think um. I mean, I mean, look, we'll, um, I got to move on, but, um, yeah, no, I feel you. Well, no, well, no, I mean, look, it sounds like you already have the right mentality about it. Right. Which is like, I mean, you were deceived, you know, you didn't act with any sort of intentional malice. Um, so I don't think yeah, you're really guilty about it. I think, I mean, if any, I mean, look, if anything, you're, you know, um, you know, one of her little, you know, you, you've been pawned like, you know, you, you, you were, you know, uh, uh, taking advantage of kind of. Yeah, I think you were. In a way, you were taking advantage of. You know, we were lied to. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, so I, I wouldn't feel bad. Yeah. I don't think. And by the way, here's another thing: is like, you know, look, she just decided to use you, but if she was going to cheat, she would have used, you know, right. anyone else. So, you know, uh, I, I'm sorry to hear that you got swept up in this whole fucking thing, but I, I don't think you need to feel any any guilt about it, as long as you're telling the truth that you had no idea. You know. Yeah. I, well, I, I didn't have any, uh, like, the whole relationship wasn't serious or whatever. It was just kind of, sure. you know, like, hang out and... and well, I, whether you're, the relationship was whatever, serious I don't, but, is sort of... But, um... But, yeah, it, it, it's a sh- shitty feeling, so I just wanted kind of your... Yeah, in, yeah. Your I, I'm advice. sorry, I again, I'm sorry to hear that you got caught up in a long night that, for you, I, you know, I don't think that but, you need to feel, I don't think you need to feel guilty about that. For sure. Is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, it's just to an interesting. Before we go, Leonard. Uh, not to take life too seriously. Um, and uh, I don't really know. Uh, relationships aren't really. I don't really know if they're fit for uh, our generation anymore. They're you not. Know? Well, no, they're That's not fit for everyone. If seriously. you want to go ahead and be a single guy and do whatever you're gonna do, then do it until it no longer yeah. serves you. Well, I know you're like that. Um, the single life is definitely the life to live. But um, a lot of callers you have call in about like relationship advice, and uh, I think everyone should just. Everyone seems and everyone's really young when they're calling into you about this kind of shit. And you and me, we're the same age. Um, and uh, it's just kind of like, yo, don't take life too seriously. That's what you tell them. You seem too. to know a lot you about know, like, me, Leonard. I mean, I've been listening to you. We've we've actually chatted in the past before about art and oh. such. But uh, yeah. But um, no. Well, I don't, listen, I don't man. Even know um, you, to be honest. Thank you for calling and sharing, and I'm sorry that it happened yeah. to you. And um, I'll talk to you again in another life. Yeah, there's nothing to be sorry about. But uh, <laughs> uh, have a good night, man. You too, Leonard. Hope you get some good calls. Yes. Hello. Hey. Hey, I heard that. Uh, what's your name? Ryan. Ryan, uh, I heard you have a test of some kind that you would like to, to share with uh, the, the the listeners. Yes, of course. So I actually have a uh, basically I believe that I, I love cars. I love driving. And my philosophy really is that. Um, people should be able to go as fast as they can handle and have proven they can handle. handle. Mm. Okay. Uh, so wait, is this a test or a philosophy? It, it's There's a test related to it. Um, okay, what is so the test? So I think that there should be different levels of driver's licenses that you mm-hmm. can earn based off of your skill aptitude on a test that you can take that measures certain things like your ability to drive, your reaction times, and things like that. I'm really, you know, I'm really trying to be open-minded about the idea of having different... Wait, so you're telling me you want to enact a system in which you can get, like, a silver driver's license that will allow you to go X amount of miles over the speed limit. Yes, exactly. And, and, okay, so I'm curious, 
and maybe this is where the test aspect of this philosophy comes in. How does one prove themselves worthy of this higher echelon driver's license? Um, I think the best way that I've so far thought of, and this, is, this isn't something I've thought about extensively. It's just kind of an idea that popped in my head the other day. Sure. Um, but I feel like it would be something like you take uh, a few laps around a track and re- they like measure how you react to different things and basically just um, do you know how you do those like when you drop a ruler you can measure your reaction time I've never heard of that no oh th- th- what is it tell explain it uh, you're in a physics class basically they hold the ruler between your fingers and then if you and then they drop it, and you just have to try to catch it right when they drop it. Um, I, I feel stupid. I'm doing the physical pinching. Um, but, yeah, so you try to catch it, and based off of where you catch it, um, you can measure how quickly your brain was able to react, see it, and then respond to the fact that it's dropping. You know, I think, you know, this. it's an interesting theory. It's an interesting theory. My problem is... Uh, I mean, aside from how we're going to test people to see what color license they're going to get, is how do I mean what the the, the problem? We have to share roads, right? We have to share roads, so the the yellow license people are going to be sharing roads with the with the green license people, you know, and 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 shit's going to get fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I haven't thought of it that way. That makes sense. I guess. I mean, I really do have a biased standpoint here because I, I really do have a. Because you would like to go very I, fast I in your car, brain, so you're you're biased about that. Yeah, I, my brain's just romanticizing about this world where that's okay. Uh, what's the fastest that you have gone on the highway? Um, the fastest I went on the highway was 142 miles an hour. 142 miles an hour. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Did you not? You didn't get pulled it, it over? No, I have been pulled over going 90 and 80. Dude, what do but you even say? I, I what do you even say if you get pulled over after going, if, after someone clocks you at 142 miles an hour? What do you even say? <laughs> You just got to throw up your hand. You got to be like, all right, this is it. I'm going to jail. Yeah, honestly, if you get pulled over going that fast, you're going to jail. Um, I was lucky enough both times I got pulled over. If you're going over 80, it's criminal. You can get pulled over and go to jail for going anything over 80. Um, or 20 and, and what is it if you go over 140? Um, that's, is it super criminal? They, I don't know. They, yeah, it's, it's, yeah you're, you're screwed. Um, well, listen, honestly, um, the best Ryan, do, oh, go ahead. The best thing yeah. to do, I want to hear it. The best thing to do if you're getting clocks going 140 is just keep oh, going please. because they can't chase you at that speed for long. They disengage mm. pursuit quickly. Mm. Interesting. Um, you know, that makes sense in theory. You got all these thoughts. See, that makes sense. In th- that makes sense in theory, because if you go faster, they cannot catch you. You've got all these thoughts, mm-hmm. Ryan, that make a lot of sense in theory. Um, and, you know, keep thinking, Ryan. You have a creative brain. Keep thinking on these ideas, and eventually you'll come up with something that makes sense in practice. Uh, or you'll get yourself and a bunch of people killed in, in the process of doing so. But uh, such as must happen for the uh, advancements of uh, new ideas in our society. Precisely, precisely. Uh, have a good rest of the night, Ryan. Yeah, you too. What car does the caller drive? I don't know. I don't know what fucking car can go 142 miles an hour. I don't fuck with cars, man. I wish I... I, I, My ultimate dream is I want to live in a walkable city. I don't fuck around with cars. Because it's so easy to die. It's so easy to die. Right, like, like, all right. Wh- imagine your stupid day where you're sitting on a in a chair for like ninety percent of it. You're on the computer, working or watching YouTube, whatever the fuck. And then, 
Like, like if you're on your computer and you're watching YouTube, the likelihood that you're going to die is pretty low. It's like zero. It's I think it's pretty close. To, I think it's pretty close to zero percent. I think it's under one percent. The likelihood that you're just going to fucking just die when you're sitting at home. Uh, when you're walking down the street, the likelihood that you're going to die, go it goes up a little bit. You know, somebody could come and shoot you in the face or you could trip on a rock. Or something could happen. But when you get into a car, I mean, the likelihood you're going to die goes to pro- about 75% chance that you're going to die if you're driving a car. Um, I've talked to people who say that they have anxiety about driving cars. And I'm like, that's... That makes sense. You know, there's nothing wrong with you if you have anxiety about driving cars. This is an extremely correct thing to be anxious about. Because you're... I mean, roads are... We're fucking jousting out there. It's like... I'm... It's like one guy's going as fast... 50 miles an hour down this... And then there's another guy's going the same way. But there's there's list, little amount of fucking space between them. We're jousting out there. Hello, Blair from Ohio. Hello. <laughs> What's up, Blair from Ohio? Oh, uh, nothing much. How are you? Um, how am I? I am not doing too bad. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. Is your toe doing better? Uh, I appreciate you asking me that. My toe is doing f- pretty better, I think. <laughs> That's good. Um, so what's going on with you, Blair? Um, nothing really. Um, I called to get some advice about um, like relationships, I guess. Uh, I'll do my best. What's what's uh, what's going on with you? <laughs> Yo, we're, uh, well, is there like a Mrs. Gecko? <laughs> um, is there a Mrs. Gecko? Probably out there somewhere. There's all kinds of people with all kinds of names. But what's going on in your life? <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever seen that movie, Good Luck Chuck? Good Luck Chuck. Uh, I've, I've heard of it. I'm familiar. Okay. Um, so basically, like, this guy, you know, women go to him, and they get with him, and then they find, like, their forever, like, thing afterwards. I feel like that's kind of my life right now. Good luck, so so in Good Luck Chuck, women get with Chuck, and then they just fall in love with him forever. No, they get, like, like, so the next boyfriend that they get, um, that's, like, who they get married to. Oh, so Chuck is the penultimate lover, eternally. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. And that's his. And that's his. And that's is that an issue for him? Um, no, but for me, yeah, I'm kind of over it. Oh, okay. So well, you okay. are the perpetual penultimate <laughs> lover before the guy finds whoever he actually ends up being with. <laughs> Yeah, um, so, like, the last three people I've talked to, um, I've been single for, like, three years now, so, like, the last three people I kind of got serious with, uh, have ghosted me, stopped talking to me, and then, like, a week later, they have another girlfriend, and it's, like, the Mm. weirdest thing, I don't know. Mm. Interesting, interesting. (laughs) Um, I, um... No, go ahead, please. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, I'm actually kind of, I think I'm talking to someone right now. Um, I don't know if I'm being like homie zone though. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's a weird relationship that we have. Why? Tell me more about this relationship. Why do you think it is It is weird? <laughs> uh, he just kind of like tells me about dates he goes on and mm-hmm. like how bad they are. But we talk all the time. Um like, it's kind of cute. Like, he'll have me, like, he'll want to talk to me on his way home from work. Or, like, we'll talk on the phone before bed and stuff. Uh, we, we've hung out a few times. We actually went on a date last Friday. 
and it was good. I kind of fucked it up, though, by being late. I didn't mean to. Um, I had to scramble for, like, a babysitter last minute. So we missed dinner like he wanted to. But we still did other the other two things. That oh, you've got a child. On. I do, yeah. So be honest with me. Um, yeah. Has that been, like, a... a uh, any any amount of of impediment in in your dating life? Um, there's been some people that are like, I don't know. I try to keep my home life away from my dating life because um, my son has a dad and he sees him, so it's it's no issue. I'm not looking for someone for my son. You know, it's for me. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um. There's- it's it is weird because there's a lot of people my age that are like, oh, you have a five year old, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, look, regardless of what other people your age think about, you know, your life, like, um, well, how do you meet these these guys? You said that there's all these guys who go on like a, they like they go on a few dates with you, and then they find someone else. Do when you go on a date with first of all, where are you meeting these guys? Is it like a this is this a Tinder thing, a Hinge thing? Uh, Tinder and Hinge, yeah. Okay, and do they do they know off the bat that you have a child? Yeah, I actually um, put in my profiles that I'm a mom. Okay, yeah, I think that's I think that's good. Not you know, not not because anyone has any right to anyone else's business, but you know, at the end of the day, it makes things easier for you, right? Because you don't want to waste any time, you know, with anyone who you don't know is already cool yeah. with that. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, interesting. So, so, all right, so tell me more about this guy who you're talking to right now, because it sounds like things are going good with that guy. <laughs> I I think so, but, like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> he might be watching the stream, so I'm trying to watch what I say. Um, did he, t- did you, no, did you like, show him the stream? No, oh, he tried to call me when I was in the queue, and I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. <laughs> Okay, I've been like, I've been super hyped about getting on your show for a minute. So like, he's always, he, we're always talking about it. Like, oh, he's like, get in there, you got it. And so finally, <laughs> you're like, always talking about it because you're like, you're like, I really want to call this geckos to talk about you. <laughs> I have told him. I was like, when I if I ever get in, I'm talking shit. And he he said he would do the same. Yeah. <laughs> dude, is he is he on the fucking queue? Let's conference this motherfucker in, dude. I don't, I don't know if he's on the queue. Do you want me to, like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know if he's calling. No, well, listen. Okay, um, so you're in this, you're in this thing where you feel like guys are, you feel like you're the, you're the, you're the, you know, always whatever, being passed over or, or whatever. But, um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, uh, the, the remedy to that, if there is one, is, like, patience, right? And it sounds like you've, uh been pretty patient and I don't know it sounds like this things are working out with this guy yeah I yeah I do think I need to like I just get really excited so it's like um like my love language is like buying stuff and like giving presents and like filling it you know like oh I like you here's this I got this for you so it's like I'm like, oh my god! I've been trying so hard not to buy a bunch of gifts and be like, "Hey, how's it going?" <laughs> like, but I don't want to like scare him away. Like, I haven't done that before, but this one, I don't know. I feel like I feel like it's kind of different. So, you know, here kind of my my general thought process on like dating is that like you shouldn't. Ever not for and this is not I'm not saying this is not like a cheesy thing I'm saying this is like a logic, okay. This is not a motivational speech. You shouldn't compromise oh. logically. You should not compromise who you are while you are dating <laughs> because you got to find someone no. who is cool with who how you are, and if your love language yeah. is gifts. Now here's now here okay now here's the tricky part of what I just said. Is that if you're peculiar or if you act in ways that are not how a lot of people act or if maybe, I don't know, I, I don't know anything about, you know, 
how many people give gifts as their love language, but whatever, then then you have to be a little bit more patient. Yeah. If you I have understand. high standards, um, you got to be a little bit more patient, which is okay. I think having high standards is good, by the way. I don't know if I'm saying he, shit that's uh, not related to what blowing up my about. phone. <laughs> he's in the queue. <laughs> Put him, he's in the queue? What's that? his name? Um, His name's Kane. There, there ain't no Kane in this, uh, in this queue right here. I don't know his, um, his his Twitch thing is like Clutchy McScrub or Conf something. He's, like he's in the chat, not the queue. Conference, conference him in if you want. If you want, to. you don't have to. I'm, you know, I don't know what we're gonna talk about. I don't. But we can try it. <laughs> oh no! He keeps texting me. <laughs> listen, listen. What's your name again? Uh, did he? You didn't convert. You're not. What, what's your? Are you there? Yeah. yeah what's up? Oh, it's both of you guys. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Hey, what's up, man? My name's Kane. Kane? Yeah. Like Cain and Abel from the Bible. <laughs> yeah, we get that a lot. Um, how's your life going, Kane? Oh, it's good, man. It's good. Just, uh, you know, getting through the work week and stuff. Getting through the oh, what? Are you watching TV right now? Uh, no, I'm not. When are you guys watching no. TV? It is not me. It, it was me. Sorry. Oh, uh, no worries. Wait, so how long have you guys been hanging out with each other? Wait. What would you say, like a couple weeks? Like yeah, a month? like a month, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, um, it's been about a month. And where'd you guys meet? Hinge? Tinder? Um, it was Hinge. Well, we started talking on Hinge, but we met, um, I was like 14 when we first met. Oh, really? <laughs> So this is one of those yeah. like uh, you met, you first meet in uh, whatever middle school, and then uh, all of a sudden you're on Hinge, and you're like, I saw, I remember that guy from whatever math class, and now you're you're hanging out again. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think uh, I was 16, she was 14, pretty much. We were both just like, in school together. That's cool. Was it as is it was it was it nice to reconnect? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we vibed pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Beautiful. Um, Kane, Kane, do you even know what the what this is that we're? Do you even know about what this is? Uh, kind of. Yeah, I I caught a couple of your streams on Reddit. Did you start streaming on on Reddit before you went to Twitch? I'm everywhere. I'm on MySpace. I'm on fucking <laughs> Pornhub. <laughs> Name it. I'm there. Okay. Spank Bang. You ever been to SpankBang.com? <laughs> no, I haven't. You should check it out. No, I know chat's blowing up right now. It's, so yeah, we met when we were <laughs> when we were underage. We were both minors, and then in the future, where I'm 26 now, she's. What, 24? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... <laughs> everybody's like, whoa, wait a minute. And how do you feel Not as really. though you have matured, developed, or even stayed the same since since you since you first rendezvoused a decade prior? Oh, man. Oh, man, I don't even know how to answer that, honestly. It's, um... Yeah, I feel like I've I've definitely grown up. You're definitely grown up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say I definitely grew up a lot, um, matured a bit. Um, pretty much got my life going. I don't know. What do you What do you look for in a partner, Kane? Uh, 
<laughs> somebody that somebody that gets me, somebody that uh, I can vibe with, somebody mm. that um I don't know. I don't know really. <laughs> I think that's a sufficient answer. Somebody that vibes with you, somebody that gets you, that's a sufficient answer. I would say that's that's pretty common amongst uh amongst most people. Yeah. Well, listen, Kane and what's your name again? Blair. Blair, Kane and Blair. Listen, um, you could die at any second, so live in the moment and um, enjoy uh, uh, the time that you've got uh, where you're a young person that can uh, talk to people and do things and hold hands and all that uh, crazy crap, you know? Enjoy it while you can. Because one day you'll be old and alone and all your friends will be dead. Or you'll be dead. That's re- that's the two options. So, you know, chill. Yeah, chill so while you got pretty it. Pretty much just enjoy your, enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it, Gecko. End time. <laughs> you guys have a good it, man. <laughs> Someone said Gek is going to a dark place. Why is... I don't know. No. You know what? Here's the thing. Whether or not I believe in love. I think I believe in love in a general sense. But is love... But I don't I don't know if... I don't know if love is for everyone. I don't know if love is for everyone. I don't know if it's for me, dude. Classic line. I thought... Lo- and look. I, I thought love was only true in fairy tales. Not for somebody else, but not for me. You know? That's Okay. Do you need love? Do you need love? Do you need a soulmate, a partner, a forever, whatever the fuck, you know? Can't you just walk around, eat food, and jerk off in peace and then die? Is that not a life well lived? Climb a mountain, look at a leaf, eat a piece of pizza... Talk to your friend on the phone and then die. Is there anything wrong with that? I don't think so. Am I lonely? Actually, no. I'm actually feeling pretty good. Well, I've gotten used to... I, uh, this is this is a difference between being lonely and enjoying being... I like... I like I like having some I like having time to myself. I like I like I like I like, uh, I like getting high and going to the museum alone. The aquar getting going to the aquarium alone. Going to the aquarium alone is the best. I I I got high. I went to the Georgia Aquarium alone. I stared at a fish for twenty five minutes. You can't do that shit if you go to the aquarium with other people. You have to keep pace with them as they maneuver around the various rooms. There's no time to build connection with the fish. And that's why I go to the aquarium in the first place. Because I'm lonely. Every weekend goes on the line.